socialism um, for the 21st century emerging. Um, and it's emerged gradually. It hasn't just you know, dropped from the sky. Here's our conception of socialism. What has happened is a step-by-step process. So for example, um, in 2003, Chavez didn't talk about socialism. What he talked about was the social economy. And he talked about the social economy compared to the capitalist economy, the logic of the social economy compared to the logic of, of capital. So he could say, you know, uh, it, it's one of his Allo Presidente uh, programs, uh, which was devoted to the social economy. He could say, quote, the logic of capital is a perverse logic. And he said, continued, it doesn't care about destroying the rivers in Lake Maracaibo. It doesn't care about denying children in education and putting them to work, about the hunger of workers and about the malnutrition of their children. It is not interested in labor accidents if workers eat, if they have housing, where they sleep, if they have schools, if when they get sick they have doctors, or when they are, if, when, if when they are old they have a pension. Quote, no, the logic of capital cares nothing about that. It is diabolical. It is perverse. End of quote. And then he went on to say, compare that to the social economy. What's the logic of the social economy? And he said, quote, the social economy bases its logic on the human being, on work, that is to say, on the worker and the worker's family, that is to say, in the human being, end of quote, he said. And the social economy does not focus on economic gain, on exchange values, rather, quote, the social economy generates mainly use value, end of quote. And he said, its purpose is, quote, the construction of the new man, the new woman, the new society, end of quote. He's talking about the social economy. He's talking about socialism there. Well, it's not simply, but he hasn't named it socialism yet. But that's in, in 2003. By the end of 2004, he started at, at a meeting I was at. It was of the Artists and Intellectuals in Defense of Humanity. He started to talk about socialism. And one month later, at the World Social Forum in Porto Alegre in 2005, you know, uh, Chavez began to talk very explicitly about the, the nature of socialism. Um, and in that uh, discussion, um, let me see if I can find the exact quote um, from him. He said in 2005, January 2005, well, we have to reinvent socialism. And he said, quote, it can't be the kind of socialism that we saw in the Soviet Union, but it will emerge as we develop new systems that are based on, built on cooperation, not competition. And he said, we have to transcend capitalism if we're ever going to end poverty of the majority of the world, quote, but we cannot resort to state capitalism, which would be the same perversion of the Soviet Union. We must reclaim socialism as a thesis, a project, and a path, but a new type of socialism, a humanist one, which puts humans and not machines or the state ahead of everything, end of quote. So that's January 2005. And Chavez has continued to advance his, in his ideas about socialism. Um, in January 2007, he began to talk about what he called the socialist triangle. And by the socialist triangle, Chavez meant you know, uh, a process which involved three sides. Uh, the social property, social ownership of the means of production, the first side. A second side, which was, you know, where that social ownership of the means of production, that social property was then used, you know, um, managed by workers. Uh, it, it was the side of social production, social production organized by workers. The third side being for communal needs and purposes. And Chavez then began to talk about this socialist triangle, and that brings us to the high tech you know, portion of the discussion tonight, because um, we have a small, I have a small video, uh, a portion of a video um, to show you. And let me just situate it. Um, in October 2007, uh, at the Central International Miranda uh, SIM, um, we, I set up a, had a two-day conference on worker management theory and experiences. And to that conference, we brought a number of theorists um, and a number of participants in worker management um, who have from Argentina, uh, Brazil, but also many from the various experiments and various cases of recovered factories in Venezuela. And the theorists included myself, uh, a UK a theorist from the United Kingdom, Pat Devine, who wrote a book, Economic Planning and Democracy in 1988, um, a book which 
you know, people re really should have read it was far ahead of its time. Um, and Carlos Lanz, who was probably the, who continues to be probably the leading Marxist um, in Venezuela, uh, who was a former guerrilla, you know, who was in jail for several years for the kidnapping of an American businessman um, who had, you know, used the opportunity in prison to read a lot, you know, read a lot of Gramsci, et cetera. Uh, and Carlos was, uh, you know, put in charge of the, the aluminum company um, Alcasa, um, to introduce worker management there um, in, I guess it was 2005, uh, beginning in 2005. Um, so he talks about, as, a, as another theorist in the process, and there was a, a fourth uh, person, of uh, Argentine uh, the, uh, Marxist economist by the name of Pablo Levin, but he doesn't appear in this portion of the, of the video. Um, so what we had was a discussion of, of the theory of, of worker management, um, and then we had participants from a number of um, you know, factories, etc. Um, and then in that context, um, we had a lot of discussion from the floor, from people who were involved in various experiences, etc. So what you'll see here um, is a 12-minute segment which falls in the middle of that uh, the video we decided to make. Now, let me explain why um, we decided to make this video, um, uh, which is far more grueling than I ever thought it you know, was. The making of video is not easy, you know. You know and so we're here where we were amateurs trying to make videos. Uh, so anyway, what we, um, what we decided to do, because of the nature of the conference and because a number of workers said, why is this conference happening here? Why isn't it happening, you know, in Caracas? Why isn't it happening in our plant floor? All the workers need to hear this. We decided, well, we couldn't possibly have a conference in every workplace, but we could create a video out of the conference and then take it to workplaces. And that's the point of the video that we're working on, which it, it will end with a discussion with the workers themselves talking about the obstacles they faced in worker management. And we're going to take, you know, with those questions, we're going to take it to workplaces uh, as part of deepening the process in Venezuela, take it to workplaces and show it there and say, you know, what, do you, what would be the obstacles here? You know, what are the possibilities here? Do you see these problems, et cetera, that would happen here, et cetera? So that's the way we're going to do it. But what you'll see here is this portion, which is in the middle, which is the most complete version. Uh, this is the part which I think doesn't need too much work, although I think it needs some. Um, and uh, this is the section on the socialist triangle. So um, the high tech expert will you know, make this live. <laughs> There's the, uh, the short video. Um, and let me just say that what is happening in Venezuela is a process of trying to build each side of that triangle. Um, it's a slow process, um, and sometimes it advances and it retreats and advances and retreats, and that's happened in a number of these particular cases where there have been these testimonies from, from uh, workers. Um, but nevertheless, it, it does go forward. Um, certainly in the area of social property, um, one of the things we can see very clearly is, is the advance of state property, uh, state ownership relative to private ownership. Um, the first most important recovery was the recovery of the oil company, which had been, uh, which was nominally a state company, but was a state within a state which was controlled by the, the management of the company. Um, and so they, this management of the company had uh, developed the miraculous um, you know, feat of ensuring that very few profits, you know, were ever earned by the by the company in in uh, Venezuela by, you know, uh, est establishing a set of relationships with refineries outside Venezuela, to which the crude oil was sent um, at uh, transfer prices that allowed the profits all to show up in the refineries where they you know where they could not come back to the state. Um, you know, um, and so that the recovery of the oil company and the revenues of the oil company became absolutely critical because that was a precondition for being able to create the social missions in education, health, um, and um, the you know uh, the uh, programs such as Merchant Mercal with the subsidized uh, food for uh, you know subsidized necessities, etc. In terms of food. So Pedavesa, an absolutely essential recovery, but a whole series of companies that had been privatized under the previous neoliberal governments, you know, uh, have been recovered. Um, an example of that is the electricity company, uh, the telecommunications company, um, and uh, more recently the steel company. 
um, Sidor after a long strike uh, by workers. Um, it, it was ultimately, you know, uh, renationalized. Uh, um, and similarly, 